Welcome to this video in which we are going to be exploring uh, the, the way that I created this um, post-it um, box holder, post-it holder box. Um, and um, basically you can see the post-its are here. There's the box. It's a finger joint box made using Maker Case. And then in TechSoft Design, I've basically uh, customized it to have this kind of grilled finish all the way around, apart from, of course, the bottom face. We've also added into this a hinge lid. Let's just put the post post-its in the right way around there. And I like the fact that I've got this cutout here, which allows me to not only open the lid, but also access the post-its too. And I've got two batches of post-its there just for good measure. Okay, so there's a few things about this, or two actual main things that I'm a bit disappointed by. The first thing is you might see here that the finish of the veneer on the on the top piece of um, of, of MDF here, so this is MDF with a walnut veneer on both faces, um, actually started to break away. And that's because when I laser cut this, um, the, um, the laser cutter perhaps didn't cut all the way through, but I, I don't want to have it burning too hard. Um, and I actually ended up this, this is the top face of the, of the wood in the laser cutter. This is the bottom face. And I, and I punched them through. And as I punched them through, it split off some of the veneer, um, where the laser cut wasn't quite so, so, so clean. Um, so that's a bit of a disappointment. And with hindsight, I'd have made it so that this was actually the other way around. I'd have flipped this and had this as the external face, because you can see there that that's looking a much, much neater and had this as the internal face of the box. Anyway, that's one thing. Oh, while I'm on this particular point as well, maybe the issue here too is that the actual wood frame here is too thin. And I'm going to be looking at that a bit later on when I, I show you how I did this. Um, and the other thing is, I love the hinge lid, but here the box lid isn't the right width. I've made it so that the box lid basically is, the, is this indented size to, uh, to, so that we fit with the hinge, but then I've continued that width all the way along. What I should have done is I should have expanded the lid width here by the three millimeter thickness of the hinge on the right and on the left here, so that when it closes, the hinge sits on the top of the box here rather than having this, this cut out here, okay? And at the moment, it means it's kind of like a bit squidgy and I can press down on that and that lid kind of compresses. And I find that disappointing. I should have had it so that it was sticking out. So I'm going to be looking at all of those features basically in this in this series of videos. That's my goal. Okay, so on the uh, left of the, sorry, on the right of the screen here, what we've got um, is my initial version one of the CAD file that I created to make this uh, post-it box. Um, and I'm going to just quickly go through how I set that up on the left-hand side of the screen here. I've got a brand new TechSoft uh, version three CAD file here. So as usual, what I'm going to do on the left here, I'm going to come to the grid settings and uh, I'm going to make sure that my grid is a five mil grid, which gives me a lot better uh, resolution to work with. I'm also going to make sure this is pale blue and light. So nothing new there. Uh, now let's just, I've, I've gone on to make a case to create this. Um, and the dimensions I've put in to make a case have been carefully selected to make sure that the post-its fit perfectly in here. Now just notice here, I don't know whether you can hear that, there is a bit of a wobble in here. There's a bit of there's a tolerance around the outside of this, okay? And uh, I can't remember the exact tolerance, but it was probably going to be about a two millimeter tolerance. So it gives me one millimeter of movement, um, you know, either side or one millimeter space all the way around the post-it, okay? Um, so, you know, you will need to do the research to find out the dimensions that this box needs to be. And when I work in uh, Make a Case as well, I made sure that I was working with the internal dimensions of the box. In Make a Case, you have the option of confirming here the external or the internal measurements, and I went there with the internal. And of course, I'm working with nice integer values in terms of millimeters, not some crazy decimal places to make my life easy. Good. Okay, so let's just see where we are. Um, I'm going to go to file. So I've, I've downloaded the make a case file as a DXF file. I'm going to import that DXF file. And you can see I've already got it here. Okay, let's open that up. Oh, and when, sorry, one second, before I insert that, I'm gonna make sure I've got Gridlock on here. So let's go back to bitmap, bitmaps there, import. 
Um, import bitmaps. No, I don't want to go import bitmaps. What am I doing? File, import, file, excuse me. Here we go, DXF, open. And in here, I need to make sure that it's in millimeters and not in inches, okay? Everything else can be the same. And there it is. So hopefully you can see here that, uh, you know, things are matching up here. Now, notice that I've made a few developments here um, in terms of, ah, now, I mean, I haven't had a look at this, actually. I would, I'm actually missing here. I don't know. No, I'm mistaken. Let me get this right here. Um, the, the, this is an open box, so there's no lid on this box. That's why there's only the bottom section here. And, of course, what I need to do is I need to make this lid here. And let's just quickly review how I can go about doing doing that okay i'm going to zoom in here on the bottom panel here because you remember that i effectively want to have it so that my bottom panel and my top panel are identical apart from the fact that this has got a little lip at the front here that lets me lift the lid easily and at the back here i've got it so the hinge is sticking out here which means that when the lid is open hopefully you can see there that that lid opens wide of the box OK, uh, which now means that actually it acts like a little hinge stop. You know, when the when the wood here hits the back panel, it stops it from going any further there, which is very nice. OK, so it holds the lid up and it's slightly inclined back as well. OK, um, which I'm going to have to, I've got to, I, but I made this, which was a while ago. I had to think about all these things. So let's have a see if I can just come back to my CAD file here and explore this in more detail. Now, the issue here is that this bottom panel is off the grid. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select everything, Control U ungroup. Okay, now I can see that this is broken down into individual lines, which isn't very useful. So here we go. Let's clean this up. Um, now I could select from the top left down, but I might select some of these lines instead. So instead I'm going to select from the bottom right up, and that way I can make sure that I stop the selection between these two panels. And I'm going to just make sure here as well that I shift deselect bottom. Uh, and now I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to make that into a path. I could group it. In my case, I'm going to make it into a path because that means it's one continuous polygon, which is more powerful. I won't go into the details now, but trust me, that's more powerful. Uh, also notice as well that bottom has been broken up as well. So I'm going to select that and also edit. In fact, uh, yeah, uh, let's just look at why make path is more powerful. Actually, I'm going to actually take this copy, paste. So this one here, I'm going to group control G. And this one here, I'm going to make into a path control H path control H okay now then I'm going to select both fill solid black fill only the one that's been made into a path is able to be filled the group cannot be filled okay so I'm going to zap that one I don't want it however if I had dissimilar parts like polylines text perhaps a bitmap then I have to use group because if I try to combine it as a continuous um, a polygon, then it wouldn't recognize, for example, the text and the bitmaps as, as, a, as a vector. Okay, right, so that's looking good. Now, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this outline here, and I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to bring it down here. Okay, so, so far, nothing miraculous has happened. But now what I want to do is I want to move this so it's at the bottom left of the screen. Now, I came across something very interesting the other day. I'm going to select this, and I realized that normally if I left-click on this, I can move the image around, yeah? Click, move, click. It's a very unique thing to text off. However, if I right-click on this, look what happens. I can move that down to the bottom left corner, which now is I can zoom in on this, and I've got more control. How cool is that? Now, if I try to move this around at the moment, it's snapping to the 5 mil grid, and it's not snapping the edge of this finger joint box to the blue grid. Let's come to step lock, and now what's going to let me to, let me do, look, is now bring this back, and now I've got that snapping onto the grid. Okay, now it's clearly not a, a multiple of five, this dimension here. I will just bring up my dimension line here, and I will just check out what it is. Let's turn off grid lock, let's turn on the attach tool. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here, I'm going to bring that down, and let's see, it's 83 millimeters, okay? So that's why if it, uh, it's not on the grid on the right-hand side here. It would have to be 85, a multiple of 5, 
uh, to be able to fit onto the grid there. But I'm working to the grid in this bottom left-hand corner. This is something that you could do to make your life easier, actually. If you make it so the box is multiples of five, then it would be easier for you to manage it on the grid. And that's a good suggestion there to make to, to, to simplify things and make your life a bit easier. Anyway, I'm going, going to persevere with this. Where am I going with this? Um, I'm going to think about making the lid here. Then I think I'm going to come to the end of this video. So for the lid here, I can see that actually I want to have a rectangle that is the full external length of this finger joint panel. So I'm going to come to our rectangle tool here. I'm going to make sure step lock's turned on because I need to make sure I'm working with a, um, a resolution here of a millimeter. I'm going to come down to that bottom left corner. I'm going to bring it up. and I'm going to make it so it fully expands the shape. That is the size of my lid. Okay. However, there's a few other things to highlight with this design here. Let's just get some lines in gray. I can see here, if I just extend this line along, I can see here that I've got my lid narrower than the bottom of the, of the box. Um, it's actually it's actually the width of the where, the, where the, the the finger joint has been cut out. So I think what I'm going to do here, let's just try and make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to take all of that because remember it's been ungrouped, so I've got to be careful with this now. I'm going to move it with gridlock turned on. I'm going to bring it over here. Now I'm going to take this design here. Now I've got to be careful because if I'm not, I can select that little line. Oh no, I've grouped it together, so I'm fine. I'm going to take this object here and I'm going to bring it up. And at this point, I, I am going to make sure that this shape here, let's get the bottom as well. I'm going to, to step lock. I'm going to make sure that these are all on the grid. And so again, I'm just highlighting here the, the importance of working with the grid and how this is going to make our lives so much easier. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I think, is pull that away. I'm going to move that, remove that dimension line as well as because I don't think it's necessary at the moment. I'm going to pull that away. And what I'm wanting to do here is make sure that the, the width of this lid, where the hinge is going to be, is going to be um, the right, um, sorry, the width of the box where the hinges wants to be narrower. Absolutely. So I'm just going to pull this away a little bit as well here. I've got step lock on there. We're fine. No, I shouldn't have done that with step lock on. I want to make sure I've got grid lock on. There, that's good. Okay, uh, and now let's have a see what I want to do here is get the line tool. Um, I'm going to click on that corner there and then, yeah, let's turn on radial lock here. Right click on radial lock. I'm going to only activate when drawing lines and marquee selections. That means now it's going to snap onto that point and bring me a horizontal line all the way along. I'm going to run that to there. And then now I'm going to click on here, which is that inner edge of the bot of the base, and run it all the way along to there. So now I'm making it so that this lid has either got an external dimension or it's got an internal dimension to the lid. So what I'm trying to do here is account for this, the fact here that it's not the right width, and fix it. Um, I want to have this arc here on the front. Let's get a line and let's draw a line that's going to be from this let's now use the attach tool turn off grid lock turn on the attach tool i'm going to click there turn off the radio lock as well and i'm going to click there now there's a double line there and this is the line i've just drawn i'm now going to turn grid lock back on again attach off and with this line start edit so i'm now editing the properties of this line i want it to become a curve select it to curve and then now I'm going to just use these handles here and the properties of this vector to pull out that profile. I can see that I've moved these handles here two squares or 10 millimeters to the left. And here, ah, here's an issue. They're off the grid. We're working off the grid here. So this is not a nice symmetrical curve. So again, something else to have to consider here. I'm going to have to make sure that the distance from this edge here out is the same as this distance from here to, to, to out. It's to out, does that make sense? The same distance. So let's have a see. This is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then it wants to be two millimeters down. And then this is going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. That wants to be there. And now we've got a symmetrical curve 
on that front face. Click off there and we're done. So that's introduced this kind of curvature here that I want for the front of the box. Okay, so I'm starting to work out here what I'm wanting to do. Uh, what I'm going to do in the second part of this video is just finish off the, the, um, the lid here. And also to do this, I also need to think a little bit more about what's happening here with this hinge. So see you in the next video.